Kansas is one of the favorites in the Big 12. How do they win the Big 12? What a statement to be making in 2024. Derek Johnson, Locked On Jayhawks, joining me here on the show. Let's just start with that question, Derek. What does Kansas need to do to win the Big 12? Jalen Daniels has to stay healthy. That's that's bar none. Like, it cannot happen. And last year, year before, you were fortunate enough that Jason Bean was your backup. I mean, Jason Bean finished top 20 in the country in total QBR last year. Not a lot of the teams have that as a backup. You don't have that this year. You have a really highly recruited freshman in Isaiah Marshall as a backup and uh, a kid who we saw as the third string come in a little bit last year in Cole Ballard, but you're not as comfortable there. For them to reach that ceiling, Jalen Daniels needs to be healthy. When we, he's been on the field, he's been an electric quarterback. He's been really, really good. It's just we haven't seen it enough. And when you look at the schedule that is in front of KU, they got a little bit fortunate when you're talking about you know conference schedule compared to some of the other Big 12 teams, which I think in my mind is a little bit of balancing of last year. Like you look at West Virginia last year. Um, they won nine games. I think they only played one team in the top half of the Big 12 last year. Kansas played every team in the top half of the Big 12 last year, except for West Virginia. This year, Kansas doesn't have Utah on the schedule. Kansas doesn't have Arizona on the schedule. Yes, they have Kansas State, who's going to be really good, and that'll be on the road. Uh, Iowa State, they have. They do have West Virginia this year. But getting to avoid Utah and Arizona makes it very interesting here. So I think if Jalen Daniels can stay healthy, and they can find enough from the pass rush and enough improvement from defense and special teams, that's how they can get it done with a fortunate schedule. New offensive coordinator, Jalen Daniels, uh, back at the quarterback position. I, I have a very consistent rule on this show, Derek, and that's that places that return their head coach, quarterback, and offensive coordinator, I'm a big fan. You got two of the three there at Kansas. It's why I can't look at them and go, no, I'm just going to ride them up. Like, there, there is some established level of success that I expect from them offensively. But talk about the offensive coordinator hire that they made after the previous guy, Andy Kotelnicki, am I pronouncing that yeah, correctly? Mm -hmm. It was, was, was poached away by Penn State. What's the situation there now? Well, the good news is because of the timing of when that happened, they were able to bring Jeff Grimes, who was previously at Baylor. And a lot of people will know him from his time at BYU because he was the offensive coordinator for the Zach Wilson year when he blew up. And uh, they were one of the best teams in the country that year and had one of the most explosive offenses, balanced offenses uh, with him and Tyler Algier and, and I don't know, Puka Nakua and whoever else was on the roster. And so uh, he ends up going to Baylor. And like the first year there, Baylor, they have all sorts of success. But then things fizzle out as the years kind of go on there at Baylor. And I don't know, it's it's hard to take away what happened at Baylor, how much of it was him, how much of it was was elsewhere. I think by the end of the year, they had like five freshmen on the two deep of the offensive line, which that's never a recipe for success. So do with that what you will. But they were in, able to bring him in at the beginning of December before their bowl game. So he was able to come in and he wasn't calling plays for the bowl game. They had an interim OC for that point of time, but they were able to have him kind of shadow the offense get to know the lingo and the play calling. And so, yeah, there will be differences and intricacies of what he wants to do, and the play calling might be a little bit different. But I think the idea here is for him to continue to kind of run their offense with his own little sprinkling on it, basically. And what makes it work a little bit more, the, the key word, the key phrase, I guess, we kept hearing when Lance Leipold was first hired by Kansas back in 2021 was the term wide zone. We heard that so much on the offense about how that's going to be their, their bread and butter, the wide zone running game. Well, guess what Jeff Grimes is known for? It's running wide zone. So I think there's going to be a nice, easy transition here. And he's had a lot of success, whether it was that year at Baylor or whether it was the year at BYU. He's been a, a good recruiting coach and, and assistant at a lower level that um, that isn't really uh, a big concern for me coming into the year. I just noticed, by the way, you are wearing a Big 8 Champs t-shirt to record this segment. Can we all appreciate the history yeah. that Derek has brought to Locked On College Football today? Most people, myself included, are not old enough to remember mm -hmm. the Big 8. I'm sure some in the audience are. That is, a, that is an excellent, excellent piece of uh, apparel right there. Let's talk transfer portal. Lance Leipold had his name tied to a bunch of different jobs in the offseason because he has turned around what has been, quite frankly, the worst college football program in the last 10, 15 years. And he has now brought them to the point where we can utter the phrase and be serious. How does Kansas win the Big 12? What has Kansas done in the transfer portal? They recently added by Job along the defensive line. Let's start there. How big of an impact does he make? 
Well, they need him to make a big impact. So they went from having Kyron Johnson, who ended up being a sixth round pick. They bring in Lonnie Phelps, who was all Mac. They replace him. It gets even more production. Last year, they bring in a Minnesota transfer, Austin Booker. They get even more production. He's all Big 12, goes off to the NFL draft. But this year, it kind of came into the year, and it was like, okay, who's going to be that guy? And uh, one of the defensive end spots, they're, they're set. They've got a guy who's been basically a multi-year starter. They brought in another transfer from Youngstown State and Dylan Mookie. But at the other defensive end spot, their wide defensive end spot, as they kind of call it, they're a little thinner there. They have had a couple injuries that have impacted them, some that could be season long. They've, uh, you know, have a couple guys who were way deeper on the depth chart last year who are competing for a starting role this year. They do have two really good freshmen coming in. Dak Brinkley and Deshaun Warner. Warner's like the highest rated recruit they've ever gotten in the 24-7 sports era. Like he's a top 100 recruit. He's not a guy you normally see at Kansas. He like had offers from Michigan and Ohio State. Like uh, not a guy you normally see at Kansas. They they can get playing time, but those are freshmen coming into what you want to be a Big 12 title race. Enter by Job, who, yes, he doesn't really have a ton of production under his belt, but he has at least a year of collegiate Uh, level experience and when you look at what they did last year with Austin Booker a guy who in two years at Minnesota barely played and didn't really do much and was able to come over to Kansas and have a good enough season to go off to the NFL and be all big 12 and be drafted by the Chicago Bears the hope is that by Job can at least follow a little bit in those footsteps and I mean he's a former top 100 recruit so the the potential is there it's just based on all the scouting report and the people I've talked to, he's one of those players who that was based more off potential and kind of his athleticism and everything he was, and he was more of a raw prospect. So if everything clicks, he could end up being their best pass rusher. But if it doesn't click and he needs a couple more years of seasoning, that could be one pitfall of this team that they don't really have the pass rush necessary to win a Big 12 title. When I look at this Kansas football schedule for the fall, I describe the first five games as as a uh, gauntlet adjacent. It's not full-on, brutal, difficult. You mentioned missing Utah and Arizona. That's a break. But this is not a cupcake stretch either. Now, you open with Lindenwood, which is a new Division I athletics university. That'll be a win. At Illinois in Champaign. Look, it'll be early season. Illinois might not be great this year, but they won't know that in week two, at least not yet. You come back home against UNLV, who will be one of the contenders in the Mountain West this year with Barry Odom and company at West Virginia to Morgantown. That's, that's not going to be an easy football game. And then come back home and play TCU. I think if Kansas goes 4-1 and one in that stretch, Derek, they're doing outstanding. Yeah, the, the TCU one, and, and if you're going further down the schedule, there are a couple other schools that that get to this, but there are a couple schools in the Big 12 that TCU I'd classify as like, yeah, they weren't that good last season, but they're sitting on on talent-rich areas, whether it's like a TCU, a UCF, some of these schools. Where it's Arizona like, State falls exactly. into that category. Would it shock you if one of those teams ended up being a nine-win team or something? No, of course it wouldn't. So it's easy to sit here today and be like, oh, you're playing TCU at home and they didn't even make a bowl game last year. What's the big deal? You know, but – We've seen it before with, you know, Gary Patterson years a lot where they would go like five and seven, six and six one year. And then next year, they're like 11 and and three or something like that. Um, So that's tough to gauge. The West Virginia one, very interesting because that kind of started this whole thing for Kansas um, that you go back to year two of the Lance Leipold era. So 2022, and it was their second game of the season. They were at West Virginia. And they ended up winning that game in overtime, and it ended up sparking that team making their first bowl game in over a decade worth of years. And there's a a famous video that Kansas fans have have, uh, certainly become familiarized with where it's uh, it's on the sideline. It's showing Jalen Daniels after they win the game. Kobe Bryant has the pick six to seal it, and he's, he's yelling new era that this was the start of the new era for Kansas. And so I think there is a little bit of a full circle moment in what that could mean. But yeah, that'll be a tough one. Illinois will certainly be tough. They they handled Illinois really well last year. Score ended up a lot closer than than you would think because they kind of let them creep back in it over the last quarter of the game. Good news is uh, Jerzon Newton, who was their stud defensive tackle, he caused them issues really in the pass rush all day long. Uh, but he's gone. And outside of that, I mean, there were a couple breakdowns here or there, but they handled Illinois pretty well. But obviously it's a different thing when you're going on the road than getting to play them at home on a Friday night, which is what they had last year. October 26th in Manhattan against Kansas State. Winner of that game, you could look back and say that decided which of, of the two Kansas schools ended up playing for the Big 12 title. Someone in this conference has to win it. It's perhaps the most wide open conference in the country. 
Kansas very much a player. What a time to be alive. Derek Johnson locked on at Jayhawks. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. Is Boston College going to take a major step back in the ACC, or could they surprise somebody with Bill O'Brien? That's coming up next. Before we talk Jayhawks, let's talk Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor that are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data all you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. 